Saul Bellow has said that it was the great irrepressible solitaries who set the tone of what was later to be seen as the 19th century American experience. Writers who, for much of their lives, worked in isolation, largely unrecognized, like Poe and Whitman and Melville. Of them all, none was more solitary than Emily Dickinson. Born into a conventional, comfortable family in Amherst, Massachusetts, she spent almost the whole of her life there, from her birth in 1830 till her death in 1886. And she gradually withdrew so that the family house became her whole geographical world. First the house and garden, then just the house, then simply and solely her own room. Various explanations have been hazarded as to why she behaved like this, a hopeless love affair, some kind of breakdown. But whatever prompted the choice she made, the choice of solitude, it was an interior choice. Her soul had chosen it, something touched on in several of her poems. She'd been writing poems since she was a girl, but suddenly, in her early thirties, she began to write as if possessed, 366 poems in the year 1862 alone. For years, these thousands of tiny poems lay in a box in that family house in Amherst, and it wasn't until 1890, four years after her death, that they began to be published, and the full texts weren't published until 1955. Her rhythms are shifting and subtle, but they're almost all based on the simple verses of 18th century hymns, the hymns of the New England Church. Skeptical riddles, hard-edged and yet mysterious confrontations with death and immortality and eternity. This is my letter to the world that never wrote to me. The simple news that nature told with tender majesty. Her message is committed to hands I cannot see. For love of her, sweet countrymen, judge tenderly of me. I heard a fly buzz when I died. The stillness in the room was like the stillness in the air between the heaves of storm. The eyes around had wrung them dry and breaths were gathering firm for that last onset. When the king be witness in the room. I willed my keepsakes, signed away what portion of me be assignable. And then it was there interposed a, a fly with blue, uncertain, stumbling buzz between the light and me. And then the windows failed. And then I could not see. See? 